It's Charlie, guys. I'm with um, Dylan here, and we're gonna talk smack about the finale. And obviously, <laughs> you know it's Game of Thrones. Uh, if you don't know, she was referring to Game of Thrones. Yes, yes. You need to get out from under that rock and get, get a life and watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> yes, get a life and watch uh, about seventy something hours of Game of Thrones. I think so. it's like at ninety right now. Yeah, it's way up there. <laughs> Should have been longer though. Should have been longer. <laughs> Just as they had six at least amazing seasons of one of the best TV shows of all time, if not the best one, and then the last two seasons they decided to make it short and they really like jacked up the writing and they basically ruined the show in the last couple of seasons. Overall, kind of dissatisfied with the length, the shortened last two seasons, mm -hmm. but uh, even if they wanted to keep that, keep everything else, lots of little inconsistencies like that. The, the coffee cups and the water bottles and the shots and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Or, you know, the, the little dialogue inconsistencies like John talking to Tyrion and then he's like, uh, you know, I'm not going to justify what uh, Daenerys did and I'm not going to try. And then a couple sentences later and he's like, well, her friend got her head cut off and she lost her dragon and no one talked to her at the party and also the crap. And it's just like... <laughs> things why John should have taken the throne and it makes so much sense because Tyrion was like oh who better who has better stories than the man who blah 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 and hello do they not know <laughs> that John has been through literally everything in everybody, the entire show everybody's got died and came all back the main to life. characters <laughs> hot pie's got a better story Ilan Payne has a better hot uh, better story <laughs> uh... I love you Bran but sorry yeah. Should have been your brother. They could have maybe set that up if they would have, you know, paid off his uh, connection to the White Walkers more and his uh, his abilities more mm -hmm. and made him more interesting and somehow changed that dynamic to where he wasn't just like a, a vegetable hanging out and just making people feel weird for a couple seasons. And then... <laughs> Get it if maybe people mention John as he should be the, the king on the Iron Throne uh, or they offered it to him at the end or whatever and he yeah. turned it down. That would make sense. But to just leave him completely out of that little bullshit council they had at the in the finale <laughs> is just like, okay, so then what was Rhaegar and, the, and Lyanna? What was that whole thing about? Right. And then also, why did he get brought back from the dead now? Because that doesn't make any sense. It, the, the purpose wasn't served, apparently. No. If they just want to throw him through the wall, which is another reason why I was super irritated. Yeah, he goes back to the Night's Watch, which has no reason to exist anymore. There's no more Night Kings right. or White Walkers. Like, what the hell? The Wildlings are on their side. They've been friends for a while. Like, there's no purpose for a, a Night's Watch at all. It's like, uh, I don't really get that. Yeah. It's, just, it's terrible writing and it's something that you wouldn't see as being like what that character would do, but it's just, yeah. it's like Jesus. And they regress most of the characters, like some, some characters have had arcs that they have been working on for, because the show's been on for about eight years now, so it's eight years of character arc of setting something up and then just completely turning it around in the very last season, like one of them just regressed a lot of the characters. Jamie Lannister, they regressed, they gave him a amazing character arc going from being this incestuous super self self-centered guy that's you know would kill his family members and pushed a boy out of a window and now they, you know, they gave him a full arc where somebody finally finally gave him some credibility for you know what he did uh, to the Mad King and they had this great arc and they paid some fan service off of made, making him hook up with Brienne and then the next morning when he hears that, or later that night, I guess, when he hears that uh, Cersei ambushed, uh, Cersei had Euron ambushed Daenerys and they shot down one of her dragons and he was like, goes straight back, completely regresses. Right. Poor Bran. And even if they would have done that, if they would have given him and Cersei some sort of like climactic death, that would have been great. But instead they got killed by bricks. Right. And it's like Jon Snow had a great character arc, like they're... You know, even if he didn't end up as the king on the Iron Throne, we were getting to see his leadership skills like through all these different uh, 
uh, trials and tribulations ever since they brought him back and stuff like that. And at this point now, he went from being a insecure, like kind of punk kid that was raised, you know, kind of be, being taught basically by being a bastard that he wasn't going to be shit. He was going to have to join the Night's Watch, and then he goes to the Night's Watch and he's kind of hot-headed and he's a little bit full of himself and he you know, gets chosen to be a steward for the Lord Commander and that's just a groom for leadership but he doesn't realize it at first and you know then he ends up becoming the Lord Commander and he fights with the Wildlings and he fights with the Night's Watch and he does all these battles and gets killed, gets brought back, gets justice for that, you know, fixes that issue with the Night's Watch. And he does all this stuff. Yeah, and then the last season or so he was just kind of a complete bitch that couldn't make any decisions for himself or anything like they really yeah, like the, they really ruined so his yeah they ruined his character like he used to make decisions he used to make calls like he used to make calls about the wildlings he made a call about when the wildlings were attacking castle black uh he made his own decision to go out north of the wall to the, the wildling camp and try to negotiate with mance raider because he thought that would be the best way to do it uh, so that, you know, the Night's Watch didn't basically get annihilated the next day. Mm -hmm. And that's when Stannis shows up and all that stuff. He made decisions before, and he just couldn't make any. And the ones that he did make this season, he had to ask advice from like six different people before he made them. Mm -hmm. And then they destroyed Varys and Tyrion's character. Varys and Tyrion both, some of the smartest people. And then what they do with Varys, his plan, once he heard about Jon Snow's uh, parents, his plan was to go run up to Jon Snow in the open on the beach and try to get him to, to uh, you know, go against Daenerys. And... That's what his plan was for real? That's just what it showed. It showed oh. him running up to him on the beach. He had no, like, oh, clever gotcha, plot gotcha, gotcha. or anything like that. He's supposed yeah. to be the smart. You guys usually dump it over there? Yeah, I put it in the bathroom one. It's not as big, it's just empty. Okay, off the screen. So, and Cersei was beyond disappointing in that episode like she was always supposed to be this super cunning conniving person always had a trick up her sleeve and uh you know they ended the whole night king thing being the biggest villain in episode three of all certain everybody's saying oh well cersei is supposed to, was always supposed to be the main villain it's like okay well she better be one hell of a villain now right. because you you just easily defeated the representation of death itself in the in the white walkers and the, their army so it's like, okay, so let's see what Cersei has to offer. And how does that battle go? Golden Company wiped out instantly. <laughs> Iron Fleet wiped out instantly. Yeah, All the scorpions so instantly. Gates open, armies in the city, Lannister's just troops surrender. No, nothing spectacular with the wildfire. No ace up her sleeve or anything like that. I was expecting something with the wildfire. And they never paid that off. I think they showed some of it going off what looked like by accident when Drogon was like strafing the, the city there. Mm -hmm. But she didn't have any plan. And then she cries and runs to the crypts of Jamie. And it's like, that's shitty. Yeah. Like, I kind of wanted Arya to finally get there. Yeah. I think they, they, they took away her character too because they she did. was such, such a badass. And then the last three or few episodes after the Night King, she just was like, this little innocent girl instead of this assassin that she was meant to be, you know? Yeah, I mean, that her and the Hound go all the way from Winterfell to King's Landing, and then they wait until they get into the little room with the map inside the Red Keep, and she's gonna go kill Cersei. They, they're talking on the way down there, and the Hound says, you know, I'm basically says, I'm not coming back from this, I'm gonna go die to fight my brother. And yeah. She basically says, I'm gonna go die to take Cersei off my list, that's the last person we need to take care of. And we're like, okay, it's going down on this. And then they get into the Red Keep, and the Hound is like, wait a second, hold up. You don't want to end up like me, you don't want to do this. Yeah. And then she's just like, oh. You're right. You know what? Come to think of it, I don't. Okay, I'll leave. And then <laughs> she just fucking leaves. <laughs> Like, you had the whole trip to decide this, but get decided. And you waited decided. right there. And it took, what, uh, two, three or four lines for you to get your mind changed? Do you really want to end up like me? Oh, I guess not. Thank you, Sandor. <laughs> Anyways, bye. <laughs> what? And then... Daenerys flipping out in that scene is another example of the... I'm, I would say is the bad writing like so I'm okay with her being the Mad Queen and roasting the whole city of civilians that's all fine but you gotta like 
set it up. And the way that they did that, like that, she's sitting on top of the dragon on the building, and the battle is won. The, the day literally could not have went better for Daenerys Targaryen. Like, you couldn't have asked for a better outcome. She takes care of the Iron Fleet and Euron, all the scorpions, gate is blown open, Golden Company is incinerated, her army is relatively untouched and already inside the city. They've surrendered. Lannister soldiers have surrendered. <laughs> and you've got the, the people that are still hostile and are still uh, combatants separated from the ones that aren't. The ones that aren't are the Lannister soldiers and the civilians that are in the you know main part of the city. And then the people that are still trying to fight are your ones in the Red Keep, like Cersei the Mountain and all their you know, her guard and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and no, not a scratch on Drogon, not a scratch on Daenerys, none of the main characters are harmed at all. Couldn't have asked for a better outcome. The bells are ringing and then she's just sitting up there and the, it's just, I guess, written in there that they want Amelia Clark to just get angry. And Amelia Clark does a good job. I mean, mm -hmm. she got angry, but I'm watching it and I'm like, why the hell is she getting angry right yeah. now? Yeah. This makes no sense. What is making her angry? This day couldn't have went better. Like, right. You know, I get that she's got to flip out, but why is she sitting up there quietly? What was the trigger? Yeah, yeah, they just showed her, like, they showed her, uh, her acting was a reaction to something. It wasn't taking action, it was a reaction. That's why they showed her, like, gritting her teeth and <laughs> out of nowhere. So it's like, wait, what is causing this? What, yeah. ha what happened? Did I miss something? Right. And that's kind of been the theme of this season, is, like, the showrunners just want you to, to assume stuff. Like, they don't tell yeah. you, they don't show you. And Use so, your imagination. Yeah. So she grits her teeth and goes, Arr! and then she just starts killing all the civilians. And it's like, wouldn't that have been maybe a little bit smoother, made a little bit more sense if, say, maybe she noticed, like, Masande's severed head on a spike or something? Right. Or maybe, like, one last Lannister soldier that had a working scorpion fired one last bolt off and it clips Drogon's wing or his foot or something. Something it's that's a good not image gonna... I just got. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like something, it wouldn't have to change the plot, it wouldn't change anything, Drogon's still gonna be fine, Daenerys is still gonna be fine, but it's something to, so the audience can grab that and be like, oh shit, that probably set her over the edge. Right. Let's see what she's gonna do, let's see how far she takes this, and then she just annihilates the whole city, and then you're like, oh shit, I can see how that could happen. He's like, yeah, you know, they're fighting the army of the dead, and for some reason, you know, it's Tyrion Lannister's brilliant idea to put the women and children in the crypts with other dead people, knowing that this night king oh, yeah, raise yeah. dead people. And and he's like, yeah, I don't know, Tyrion used to be such a smart guy. I guess maybe not that smart. And that's one of the most disappointing parts, is like the, the White Walkers and the whole, you know, mystery of them and the Night King. They have been foreshadowing that since the very first season of the whole series, almost eight years, you know, eight years ago. And um, and then they just never really paid it off. Like they didn't really turn out to be that much of a threat. They got defeated a couple episodes into the last season. They got defeated pretty easily. Not too many main characters died. Like it was just it didn't really pan out to anything. I mean, as you know, as cool as these and, and interesting and dangerous as they make the, the the White Walkers out to be in this prequel, we're always going to know that at the end of the day thousands and thousands of years later they tried to go south again and they only made it to the first big city and they died they they all got wiped out in like three weeks and it's like they've been building up this threat since literally series uh, the first scene in the first episode of the show i they, think i've seen yeah where the guy's running through the woods mm -hmm. and he gets his head cut off like they've been building up how dangerous those guys are for for almost a decade and then when they finally get their army together, they finally go south uh, of the wall, and they they get wiped out at the first big battle at Winterfell. It's like that sucks. So the, it's still worth watching the show because the first six seasons are literally like it's just it's different. It's so different than any show you'll ever watch because. Uh, you'll feel like none of the main characters are safe, it's more realistic. They get into like the complexity of like, it, it's like a fantasy world like backdrop, but a lot of the stuff still holds true to like real life, like the laws of power and stuff like that, you yeah. know, deceiving people and political, you know, uh, political betrayals and stuff like that. A lot of that stuff still makes sense, like there's fighting over resources, uh, it, 
and uh, they really take time to like flesh out characters and uh, it's also like most characters are morally kind of ambiguous like there's some that lean in one direction or the other but there aren't really too many if any like corny like your typical good guy character or your typical like oh this is the evil villain that just wants to ruin everybody's fun alrighty so we're just gonna wrap this up and give us an overall mood or emotion of how it in, like overall made you feel I don't know. I don't know how to end this video. So first, first uh, six. I'll even say maybe seven seasons. Amazing. Last season, it sucked. They didn't take their time with it. Lots of holes and errors. And even if they wanted to take it in that direction, just a lot of stuff that shouldn't. Should be. One word. Uh, one word. Um, disappointing. That's exactly what Very Kit Harrington said in the interview. Yes. He said, I'm gonna use Kid Harrington's word. It was very disappointing. What about I'm one word happy. for the haircut? Dope. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> okay, we're in the day. Thanks guys for watching. See you next time. See you next Bye. time. Bye. <laughs>